For our second final exam problem, we're looking at something that's slightly outside the boundaries of the material that we've looked at so far. We're going to investigate the decay chain of uranium-238. This chain contains a number of different steps from one isotope down to the next. So for example, we go from uranium-238 to a string of other things that we're not going to think about right now, until eventually we get to bismuth-210, plus some radioactive radiation over here that we're not going to be concerned with. Now bismuth-210 has a half-life of five days, and it eventually decays to polonium-210, plus again, some radiation, and this has a half-life of 138 days. After some time, it decays to lead-206. And we can say that in general, the average lifetime of a given isotope is equal to its half-life divided by the natural log of two. If you want to figure this out, you're welcome to, or you can just trust me that it's right. It will be useful for us to think about how the number of atoms in a given sample changes over time. If we think of the initial amount of atoms as equaling 100% of that amount, then when t equals the half-life, we have half of those atoms left. Over here, where we see the average lifetime marked out, of course there are still some atoms left, but many of them have already decayed. Looking at the supplied code, you can see that we're actually ignoring the part of the chain that starts with uranium-238 and beginning instead with the bismuth isotope. Our initial values show that all of the atoms are bismuth at first, and none of them are polonium and none of them are lead. What we would like you to do is to use the backward Euler, remember, backward Euler is not the same as forward Euler, to show how this decay process happens for each population of atoms. One more hint, think about how the idea of logistic growth applies to this situation and how that's going to affect the different rates of change of these populations.